This was last night. I'm currently here in Arizona. The full or almost full moon was up. Now, if you live in a city or somewhere near a forest, you probably don't know how bright it can actually get on a full moon. For some reason, I've gotten really into mapping. Me and my little cousin made one big, crudely constructed map of the desert surrounding our campground, and we waited to explore more in the night. So, when darkness set upon the desert, we ventured out into the dark. My grandpa made this super cool wooden sword for me. It has spikes all around it, and would hurt really bad if you were to get hit by it. I guess that if some crazy person or a coyote came after us, I could either scare it off or beat it away. We moved around half a mile from camp and came to the wash. For anyone who doesn't know, when it rains, yes, it rains in the desert, water could flow and create rivers. When the water is gone, the empty rivers are still there. These are called washes, and some can be huge. Some could be a few feet wide. This one was about a hundred feet wide. We were walking down the wash. Being able to see everything and having a spiked club, we weren't really scared of anything. We went to see the dead, skeletal body of a falcon, which we dubbed Anakin, after the Jedi who was cut to pieces by his master. And then returned to the wash, being careful around shadows in case anything was hiding in them. After about 20 minutes of exploring, we came to a part of the wash where the walls curved in by a few feet. The change was barely noticeable, as the wash was still huge. However, as we were about to enter this small spot, I got this terrifying feeling in my stomach. I wanted to run, to ditch my cousin and get away from there. Instead, I grabbed his arm and told him we should go back. He turned around and walked back to our camp, the whole time blabbing about a custom Smash character. I followed him, and I got that feeling again, but around five times stronger. I stopped walking and turned around. Standing where the walls curved in was what looked to be a man, but he was huge, at least seven feet tall. It looked naked in the light, but I didn't see any sort of genitals. The legs of the creature were bent backward under the knees, like wolves and dogs. Said legs were small, and the monster's arms were longer than I was tall. I'm 5'10". I couldn't see its face, but I highly doubt I wanted to. If the thing stood on its back legs, it would have been maybe 10 to 14 feet tall. The creature didn't attack, though. All it did was crawl, yes, crawl, back up the wash wall and into the bushes. The crawling was perfect and the knees didn't even touch the ground. It wasn't like a baby crawl, it was more of a girl from the ring crawl. The moment it disappeared into the bushes, I ran. I grabbed my cousin's arm and dragged him all the way back to the campsite. I've no doubt in my mind that if I'd gone any further, I would be dead right now. I don't think my pathetic wooden club would do any damage to that thing. I told my family that I saw a coyote, and that I was freaked out by it. They wouldn't believe me if I told them. I don't want to leave the trailer now. I don't want to go outside at all. I want to know if anyone else has seen something like this in House, Arizona. That thing is still out there, and I want to know what it is. There was one night that always seems to replay through my mind. Even years later, I still can't get over it. For 10 years, my brother spent the night with me as I began living with my grandparents. It seemed odd, but I remember we were in the front room and my brother was on MySpace and I was watching what I remembered to be Full Metal Alchemist on the TV. Our grandpa had a habit of turning the thermostat to below room temperature because he would get hot easily. As I watched my show, I noticed that I could see my breath. I looked at my brother and expressed how ridiculously cold it had gotten in the room. I decided to get up and change the thermostat, until I noticed the strangest thing as I entered the other room. The other rooms in the house were basically room temperature, but the dining room was practically freezing. My grandparents only had one unit, and that unit would keep all the rooms the same temperature when used. I walked back into the dining room to tell my brother what was going on, until something ran past my feet and I stumbled. Now, I will state that my grandparents have a cat. 
His name is Harley, and he's dumber than a sack of potatoes, but very lovable. However, this wasn't him. Harley was sleeping on the sofa in the same room we were in. I looked up in the next room, and on top of his old sewing machine that my grandmother had was this strange cat-like creature. Sitting on top of the sewing machine was this somewhat large cat. It had ears, but no mouth, no nose, just two black pits for eyes and white organic fleshy material for skin. Weirdly enough, it had a hue of purple on its back, but the main attention was its dark, gaping eyes, as if they were lifeless. It stared at me for about 20 seconds before jumping down and walked towards the wall and just faded out like someone in Photoshop took the opacity and just turned it down till it vanished. My mind was stumped and shocked. I turned to my brother and realised that he had a shocked look on his face. I remember the exact words that came out of my mouth that night after seeing it. Dude, did you see that freaky ass cat? This guy jumps up from the computer and yells, you saw that too? I wish we had smartphones back then. I've had three incidents where I could have taken a picture of the weird crap that goes on, but it never crosses my mind because I'm trying to process what the hell is going on. The strangest part of this is that after that faded away, there were voices coming from the kitchen, as if a number of people had appeared and were throwing a party. And let me just say, these voices were loud. However, no one in the house was woken up from it. Nor did the cat, which was freakishly odd. It was 3am when all this happened, and it lasted till 3.04am, or 3.06am. I know from research that 3am is the witching hour, but is it just a coincidence? Or has anybody else experienced something like this? So when I was 16 and my brother was 14, we had both always had an overactive imagination as very young kids, and had always been scared of being alone with our grandparents because their cribs were always creepy. One day, I had to use the bathroom, and my grandparents were outside fixing up our vegetable garden. As a wuss, I asked Nick, Yo dude, would you follow me into the house so I can go to the bathroom? Nick, judgingly and disappointed, goes, Fine. As I'm in the hallway bathroom, my brother begins looking at the photos hung on the walls of our family, and I'm quickly tending to my business. The next thing I know, as I'm about to walk out the bathroom, is Nick says, Dude, there's someone in the game room. I walk out and peer into the same room he's looking into, and for the first time in my teenage life, I froze with utter confusion. Because obviously, this person was not a person, and clearly wasn't a human being. There was a translucent grey ghost that was floating at least eight inches off the floor, staring at a cross that was nailed to the wall in the game room. It had thin white hair that looked like it was thinning out from old age. It was also wearing a long nightgown, which was also a grey whitish colour. The weirdest thing that I had noticed was this strange smoky mist coming from it, which seemed to be evaporating into the air. In a floating-like style, it turned around and looked at us. The ghost had no face. It looked like those depictions of Slenderman. To this day, I still can't believe how fast we ran out of that house screaming. Two days later, I came back over by myself and found that the cross had broken off the wall as it was made of marble clay. Pieces of it were still on the wall, strangely enough. Even to this day, Nick and I can describe what we saw what had happened. Our descriptions of this ghost are both the same. We never believed in this stuff as teenagers, but that day made us believe us. A month had passed after the floating man had appeared, and me and my brother were still bugged and needing answers to what had happened. Mostly because no one would believe us, not our parents, not our friends. So we decided to grab a camera and a candle for the brave mission of finding proof. After two hours of going room to room with no luck, we ended up in the master bedroom of our grandparents' house. Nick laid the candle on the bathroom sink in the bedroom, and I went to take pictures in the darkness. Out of nowhere, the camera died. We were weirded out because the batteries were brand new, as I was the one who opened the pack and slapped those energy-filled babies in. Confused, 
I changed the batteries with new ones that were in my pocket, which strangely also died. With the loss of our camera and no Energizer Bunny batteries, we decided to give up. I looked at Nick and said, dude, how can we suck this bad at ghost hunting? As we laughed. We turned on the light and decided to leave, but I noticed Nick had forgotten the candle. I decided to fetch the strangely now extinguished candle as I entered the doorframe into the bathroom. I froze as I noticed something was staring at me. As I looked down towards the left doorway, there was a little shadowy figure peeking over the doorframe. It leaned in more to get a better look at me. It was solid black and darker than the darkness in the room, all except for its eyes, which were solid white. I jumped back about six feet from the bathroom. Nick, looking at me, goes, Dude, what's wrong? I looked to him in disbelief and replied, Look in there, and look at the bottom left. He sticks his head into the bathroom, and not even three seconds later, he screams, grabbing the door and slamming it. What the fuck? is all he could say. I pulled the camera out of my pocket and tried to turn it on to get a shot of it, but it did not prevail. We looked at each other and decided to take another look. We opened the door and the little ghost was gone. Weirdly, we didn't see this thing at the same time, so in my curiosity, I needed to know what Nick had seen. After asking him, his description was shocking to me. He describes that he saw a three foot tall little man peeking around the corner with white eyes. Freaked out, we decided to leave and process what happened. As we walked out of the master bedroom, the camera bit came back on, at full battery level and working properly, to our disbelief. We later named that ghost Dobby, like the elf from Harry Potter. So four years ago, I got hired to do night shift as a security guy. It's in a very old building, dates back to 1917, but fairly well renovated, except for some parts. I've worked here for two years. Part of the job is leaving the front desk and walking two big closing rounds to check for any dangers like open windows, potential fire dangers, electronics that are still on at the selling desks and the magazine rooms backstage, etc. The first time I got spooked quite heavily was because of the mannequins. When doing my first round, I walked past quite a lot of mannequins. And on the second floor, there's a lot of designer clothing I like. So I remembered how some of those mannequins were positioned. The second round I walked, some of the mannequins were facing the opposite side as they previously were. This was within my first month of working here. About three months later, while checking the stock rooms, the radio was still turned on at the third floor. While walking towards it and checking the clothing hanging there, I saw a vague pale face with black long hair staring at me from between some of the clothing hanging there. I full on sprinted towards the doors and was scared shitless. It couldn't be a person since the clothes hanging there were fairly high up and I saw no legs. At this point, I was questioning my decision to work here, called in sick for a few shifts and decided to try again one more time. Fast forward a few more months while checking out the kitchen. I heard whispers coming from the freezer area. I was scared, but I wanted to be 100% sure. So I took out my phone and started recording a voice memo and got closer to the freezer. After being there for not more than five seconds and realizing it got louder and I had actual proof on my phone, I ran downstairs and waited at the desk to finally be able to leave this place. I kept listening to the voice memo I never realized something like this would actually happen to me. I'm a very down-to-earth guy and never believed in paranormal stuff, but this shook me to the core. After this last occurrence, I stopped working there. When I was about 16, I met my now deceased wife. We were childhood lovers and stuck with each other with relative ease through our teen and adult years. We didn't argue that much, and when we did, it was finished pretty as quickly as it started. We have two kids together, and we have a pretty normal household. My wife was a very spiritual person. She was very much into magic and spirits. She wasn't a loony, just a tad obsessive. Anyways, she passed away two years ago due to a lost battle with cancer. 
it pretty much destroyed me. I felt as though the light of my life was taken away from me. I hadn't experienced that pain in my life often, but when I did, I rarely got over it. Just a few months ago, I started having problems with my sleep. At first it was little things. Waking up in a sweat, having difficulty breathing, waking up and crying. But then it slowly began to get worse. I started seeing my wife in my dreams and she kept calling help for me. I couldn't move towards her and I couldn't speak either. I always woke up from these as soon as my wife came close to me. But it didn't stop there. A few days after I started having the dreams, I began seeing my wife's face in reflections of stuff. Like the windows, pots and pans, kitchen utensils, anything that was reflective. It showed her standing behind me, and when it didn't, it showed her standing a few feet behind me, in the corner of the room. During this time, I had my children sent to my parents, due to the fact I was on medication and didn't want them to see me going through it. Anyways, I've started hearing from her. Not speak, more like when you think you hear someone call your name, but you're not 100% sure whether you actually heard someone or not. Objects in my room are moved. Not by a lot, just a few centimetres, but I can still tell. It's just one of those things, you know? But yeah, stuff is getting worse. I'll keep whoever's interested updated. Over several weeks, it progressed from little things to very, very strange things. We tried to get it blessed one day. This was the day I saw it with my own eyes. They were going from room to room saying prayers and saying what people say when they're trying to get rid of spirits from a home. This house was an old house. The doors have this glossy clear coat so you can still see your figure in the door. I was standing at the door while they were blessing this one room. As they started saying the prayer, I saw something go past me in the reflection of the door and I also felt a gust of wind. I tried really hard to talk myself out of actually seeing that as I was in denial of what just happened. While talking myself out of it, I was still very curious and wanted to know if I was going crazy or if that actually happened. I wish I hadn't felt so curious. The next day after blessing the house, it was less active, but we all decided to go out to the memorial and leave the laptop camera on to see what happens when we're not home. We go out, it's all good. We forget we left the camera on and just go about our day. And after a few hours, we call it a day and head back home. Once we hit the driveway, we got excited to see if we caught anything. We were not expecting what we saw and heard. We grab the laptop. It automatically stops itself at some point and we start watching it. We had faced it down the hallway from the end room, which also captures the front door through the kitchen. My uncle waves at the camera, closes the front door. As soon as that front door closed, something was thrown at the room door from the closet in the room the laptop was in. We just saw the arm of something in the corner of the shot, as the camera was not on the closet. The item that was thrown looked like a black book, and what followed was a demonic sounding voice saying things we couldn't understand, followed by little kids' footsteps running around the house and crying. We were so scared by what we had witnessed that we didn't watch the end of the video. We tried to look for what was thrown at the door, but there was nothing. We felt a heavy urge to delete that video and not talk about it as this happened after the movie Paranormal Activity was released and we feared it would get worse if we shared our evidence. This was maybe 89 years ago and the first time I've spoken about it. A women's refuge is for women who have escaped abusive relationships. Sometimes the women are found, beaten, kidnapped, or sadly killed on the property. This was a two-story home, three bedrooms downstairs and two bedrooms upstairs, along with the kitchen and lounge. First incident, my first night there. I was last awake upstairs, having a meal in dim light. In the corner of my eye, I see a tall, shadowed figure walk out of the room of one of the women's door closed. I thought I was hallucinating, as I was extremely fatigued previously starved and sleep deprived. Incident two, my son woke us up after midnight screaming. Never had he screamed like this. I would soothe him, but 
But every time he looked back, this one corner in my room, he would scream all over again. Personally, I didn't say anything and again didn't think too much of it. Incident 3. Now this one happened every night and all us women on the bottom floor thought nothing of it. Until we all talked about it when one of the women mentioned it. So every night, us on the bottom floor would always hear the kids running around, stomping and playing. We found this weird, purely because the children upstairs always went to bed well before we ended up in our rooms. But we never questioned it, as the noise wasn't a problem. It wasn't until the mother told us her kids stay asleep once they go down, and she wouldn't let them stomp around even if they were awake, and these incidents always happen late at night. Now the next incident was what freaked me the fuck out. Downstairs, there's a door that is always opened, that leads to the stairs. This door was never closed. My room was the furthest away from this door, and outside my room was a decent sized area. There was a couch, a computer on a desk, and a computer chair. Across from my room is the washer dryer and a shower. Note that when you walk downstairs, the door is on the left. And as you enter this door, you have to turn left again, which you will see three doors of our individual rooms. It's night, we're all upstairs in the lounge, and we hear a thud. Nothing major, but I decided to go down and check my washing that was in the dryer. As I reached the stairs, I saw the door downstairs had been closed. Weird, but I carried on. I walked down, opened the door, and noticed the hallway light was off. That's when I felt really creeped out. I just got an uneasy feeling. Now, the light that was falling in from behind me kind of shed some light into the dark hallway of where our rooms were. I looked in the door to the left, the computer was off, and just as I noticed that, the computer chair turned slowly towards my direction. I noped the fuck out of there and went upstairs, and just waited for someone else to go down there and I followed them. I've had many paranormal experiences in the past which I've told people about, and they called me crazy, so no, I didn't share this one with the others. Many other small things happened here, always at night, but I try not to be fearful and sometimes acting oblivious or ignoring it was my way of not entertaining whatever it was. Sometimes it's okay to not want to know what's going on. I learned this the hard way in the past. There's some things you can't unsee or unhear. If I wasn't clear in the beginning, women and children had died in this house. Since I was a teen, I've had an interest in the supernatural, though more as an artistic and cultural expression than as a real phenomenon. Overall, I'm a pretty difficult person to talk to, both because I've been around horror media for years and because of my family history. But something happened last night that I just can't explain. I was sleeping with my husband and woke up to someone calling my last name, kind of urgently. My first instinct was that there was some sort of problem in the building and these were firefighters or first responders of some kind. I sat right up and could clearly see an old lady standing by the side of my bed. I adjusted myself, completely shocked to see her there. She didn't seem evil or angry, just a nice if a bit surprised old lady in a dressing cardigan. When I reached out to her, she dematerialized in front of my eyes. My head started to hurt immediately after she basically dissolved into thin air. I know it wasn't a dream. I had to make the very conscious decision to go back to sleep and deal with this in the morning. I spent the whole day looking up what could possibly have caused this. Some places say it's sleep paralysis, but I had full control over my body. Didn't feel threatened in any way. I actually was just surprised to see someone in my bedroom in the middle of the night. I've had vivid dreams before, but this wasn't like that at all. Maybe it was, was just sleep paralysis, but it felt so real, I figured I'd share the story and see if someone else has been through it too. This is something I do not talk about. My husband is the only person that knows the entire event. I'm going to paraphrase to save time. About four years ago, we moved from Florida to North Carolina. My husband is in the towing industry. He went on assignment to Maryland for six months. While in our home alone with my dogs, I had a major shadow person 
infestation. My husband and I talked at night all the time and he even saw it on a video call more than once. I felt like I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I didn't sleep at night, so I turned on every light in the house. My husband is Catholic and was very involved as an altar boy from ages 6 to 19. So much so, he had a free ride all through Catholic high school. This plays into the story later. Seeing these shadow things nightly had me to the point I felt like it was possibly the beginning stages of a full-on possession in the making. When I say I saw them, it started off the corner of my eye and over time I could look at it straight on. So it wasn't my mind playing tricks on me, something in my eye, lighting, and my husband saw it twice while on video with me. My whole personality changed. I looked like I had an illness that was eating me alive from the inside out. My husband would come home every few weeks for two days. When he was home, the activity was virtually non-existent, with the exception of hearing noises that we couldn't explain. He wrote those off as noises from the woods near our house. But when he was gone, I would call him on the brink of complete panic. I wasn't afraid that it would hurt me physically as much as the emotional, mental and physical drain it put on me. We discussed trying to take possession of me. We reached out to his Catholic priest who explained the stages of demonic possession. He told me the first thing that seemed to happen was a breaking down of the person mentally and physically. We were there. This all came to an end one night when I was alone and I freaked completely out. I had holy water in my home that was blessed by the Pope from the Vatican. I grabbed the holy water and walked around the house and just sprayed everything. At the same time, I was screaming, telling it that it's not welcome, that I wasn't going to be afraid anymore, and if it was coming to get me, then to fucking make it happen. I had broken. I could no longer live like this. The next morning, the whole house felt different. That night, I no longer saw the shadow figures in my home. It was an almost eerie quiet with a whole new sense of calm. We do not talk about this ever. I can't even read or watch things having to do with shadow people because of my experience. I'm not saying it in lightest terms, but I absolutely believe I have a form of PTSD from the events that transpired. We don't watch shows with it. We don't discuss it. Fast forward a little over four years. We now live in a three-story home. Our bedroom is on the top floor. It's a very quiet country neighborhood, meaning at nine, everything shuts down. My neighbors don't have lighting on their homes other than their front porch light. We don't have parties here or the police. It's very quiet and dark at night. We were sitting in bed on the top third story floor, watching TV last night. And in my hallway, I saw like a flashlight flashing around the walls. It was very fast but I sat there and stared at it, so it wasn't just like in a blink of an eye. It was like somebody outside was shining a flashlight on the house and it popped through the window. This is on the third floor, so if it were a car, the light would have reached the top level. It was only us in the house that we knew of. I looked at my husband and I said, did you see the flashlight in the hallway just now? To which he responded no and started to stare. He jumped out of bed and got his gun and his flashlight and started entering the hallway, thinking somebody may have broken in. He goes through the whole top floor, checks behind the curtain in the bathroom, turns on all the lights and finds nothing. We even looked outside on both sides of the house to see if maybe something happened and somebody was out there with a flashlight. Nothing dark, black silence like every almond light. He was in full on protection mode at this point. I told him maybe it was a car, maybe it was a reflection off the TV. And a couple other things that could have caused it to calm him down. He sat down on the bed and I watched his frozen face as he stared blankly and fixated down the hall. He said, Natalie, I'm watching a shadow go back and forth across our hallway. There's no light behind it and I can't see it through it to the window. He said it crossed three to four times. He sat there with a blank expression I've never seen in 24 years. He jumps up and turns on every single light again. He was clearly freaked out. I was starting to freak out too. The minute he mentioned that shadow person, I thought they were back in my life again. I haven't felt this type of fear, panic in quite a few years. 
I feel like I'm on a super high alert today as I'm typing this out. I don't feel safe going back to my bedroom. I cannot relive this event again. I looked at him and said, we do not talk about these things. We're not talking about what happened and do not say the word shadow around me ever again in your life. You can think it, but do not say it. After a while, he calmed down enough to lay down and go to sleep. I haven't slept yet. I just had to get this off my chest a little bit so I could breathe. I'm already dreading tonight and going to bed. I cannot have what I went through for that six months back in my life again. One night, while I was in the state of drifting to sleep, I wake up in a panic to a deep, evil sounding growl in my ear. I say in my ear because it sounded so clear to the point where it was as if someone or something was lying next to me and made this horrible noise directly in my ear, ASMR style. For context, this was a few years ago when I shared a bedroom with my younger sister. I woke up with my heart racing and shaking. I stayed awake for hours after as I didn't want to be vulnerable to anything evil in my sleep as I have a feeling it's easier for spirits to mess with you when you're in that state. A few weeks before this happened, I had gone to visit an old abandoned castle slash church with my family in the Isle of Wight. We did this because my mum loves all things horror and she loves exploring creepy places. While we visited, we messed about and didn't take it seriously. I remember me and my mum found a little underground part of the building that had metal bars to block it off. Since we were messing around, I vaguely remember we grabbed the metal bars and shook it while saying help, thinking it was funny. I now realise it probably provoked an evil spirit. I also remember at the time I had a close friend who was involved in spiritual things and could see spirits. I'm not sure if I believed it, but it was certainly believable and interesting. She used to tell me when she would see spirits, and she told me she had one that was following her at the time. I'm not sure if it was evil, but I suspect it could have been from what that as well. Maybe the spirit noticed me being close with her and was curious about me. A few nights after the growling happened, I would get woken up a lot by this time, what sounded like a man crying and whining, like an echo in my ear, and as soon as I would wake up, it would fade away. I eventually ended up saying out loud, go away, leave me alone, and it worked. It's been at least four years now since that happened and I've not experienced it again. I still wonder if maybe I was going crazy or if it was actually paranormal. This place where I used to work was located on a small boulevard behind which was an alley which separated the business from a residential area, typical suburban zoning. It was my habit to walk to the nearby deli to get lunch, and then find a nice spot in the adjoining neighbourhood to eat it, typically on a curb in the shade of a tree. One day, while looking for a likely place, I noticed the tree whipping about much the way they do when winds come heralding an approaching sun rainstorm. But this was a warm, still, sunny day, with not a cloud in the sky. I looked at the surrounding trees and shrubs, but all was calm. This one tree, and this one tree alone, was aggressively swaying to and fro. So I decided to sit upon the curb opposite it, and observe the situation to see if I could determine the source of the activity. As I watched, it became clear that there was no external wind, which shook the leaves and branches, and indeed, there was no single direction in which they moved. It was as though a being was cavorting in, through, and around the tree, never going so low as to disturb the grass or roil the dust in the gutter below, but content to remain up in the branches, twisting itself this way and that, seemingly delighting in making the leaves and branches flutter. I tried to see if I could use the movements to determine the directions the being was travelling, the course which it took, and so by getting an idea as to its shape and form, but it wasn't possible. So I resigned to sit and eat my lunch as I watched the extraordinary display. When my break was over, I went back to work, leaving the tree undoubtedly dancing. The next day, 
I returned to see if it was still there and was not disappointed. I tried to communicate telepathically with it, but didn't receive anything, nor saw any indication it was aware of my presence. It was like sitting in a park, watching a child play blissfully unaware it was being observed, or watching a dog cavort about not knowing it was seen. The rest of the week, I would come and sit and marvel. I figured that what I was witnessing was one of two things. Either I was watching a disconnect being displaying trying to affect physical reality for purposes unknown to me, or what I was seeing was a small wind amusing itself. I came to accept the latter because I figured that a soul with a human or djinn would recognise my attention and try to capitalise on it, but the being was blithely content to ignore me. I have since learned that such elemental incarnations are a part of the development of souls one of the many rungs on an eternal ladder. I myself may have been such a force, learning my lessons as I assert myself over my environment, playing with clouds and birds and trees and fallen leaves, whipping the waters to froth or gently rippling their surface. Astoundingly enough, now that I look back on it, I got bored and took to finding some place less toilsome to have my lunch. In retrospect, it was my inability to interact with it lost my interest. Curiously, I never approached it, never stood beneath the tree as its leaves and branches spasmed about, and recall that, then as now, I felt honoured to witness a wind at play, to have been given evidence that there is more, and that it was not for me to intrude. To this day, many decades later, when I drive past my old job place, I look down the street for the tree and think, that's where the wind was. I worked the night shift at a medical lab, where I had a bit of a creepy experience a while ago. There's an area of the lab called STATS, where we process specimens that need to be tested immediately. It's kind of isolated from the rest of the lab, and usually there's only two people at the station. Earlier in the night, one of my co-workers and I were exchanging scary stories that had really happened to us. It got me in a really spooky mood, because we talked a lot about hauntings and paranormal experiences. At some point when I was on a break, I was walking down a long, empty hallway. My face was in my phone, and I suddenly felt like someone was walking right behind me. I thought it was my co-worker, because he liked to prank me and scare me a lot. But when I turned around, nobody was there. The hall was completely empty, and there was nowhere anyone could have hidden. So that freaked me out a little. Especially after talking about scary experiences with my co-worker, but I didn't read into it too much and figured I was psyching myself out. At some point between 2 and 2.30, I was working at my station when I felt a distinct tap, tap, tap on the back of my chair. I turned around and was startled to see no one was there. The only other person nearby was my partner on stats, but she was working at another computer station a good 10 feet or so away from me. I had reacted to the tapping immediately and there was physically no way she could have tapped my chair and jumped back to her station in the split second it took me to turn around. That tripped me out, but again, I figured ghost stories had just psyched me up, and I was imagining things. But that tapping felt very real. I remember hearing the sound right behind me, and feeling my chair vibrate like someone was tapping on it. At this point, I should mention that phones aren't allowed at the stat station, so mine was in my locker, which was nowhere near. When I got off work around 4am, I discovered that my girlfriend had been trying to call and text me for almost two hours. I called her back, and she said how she'd had a nightmare where I was hurt, and it gave her really bad anxiety, and she'd been trying to call to make sure I was okay. I assured her I wasn't hurt, and I got home safely and helped to calm down. Later on, I looked at her texts and calls, and I noticed they'd started around 230 I asked her what time she woke up, and she said a little after 2 o'clock. So she woke up with the same time frame that I thought I felt tapping on my chair. It's most likely a coincidence. And again, I probably imagined the tapping because I'd been sharing ghost stories and psyched myself out. But I also don't necessarily disbelieve the supernatural, 
And ever since that experience, I loved to entertain the idea that a ghost was trying to get my attention and be like, hey, your girlfriend needs you. Go check your phone. The first thing that happened was when my husband and I, boyfriend at the time, were playing hide and seek. We decided to take a break and watch a movie. I had to use the restroom, so I went away. I went into our guest bathroom, which is the only one downstairs besides the one in our master bedroom. It's located in a corner hallway next to the sp two spare rooms in the house. Currently, his office and our son's room. I went inside and quickly did my business and started to wash my hands. The sink is right next to the door. While I was drying my hands, I heard and saw someone run up to the door, stop, turn around, and run into one of the adjacent rooms. I figured it was my husband ready to start the game again and ripped open the door. I fully searched each of the rooms and didn't find anyone, which I should have if it was him. There was no time for him to run by the time whatever was moved from the door and I opened it, and I clearly saw the shadow go right towards the rooms and not left towards the living room. The second thing that happened was while my husband and I were playing pool, which was right next to our front door. Right after we broke, we heard a loud knock at the front door. We looked at each other, obviously confused as it was pretty late at night. We both went to the door and answered it. There was no one there, and we both stepped out onto the porch to take a look around. We stayed out there for about 30 seconds or so to take a look around and headed back in. We were both shocked to see that the pool balls were in a straight line down the center of the pool table. It was very shocking since, as I had mentioned, we had just broken and the pool balls were scattered when we exited. The third and most recent thing that has happened was when I was alone in the house, shocker. I was sweeping the steps since some of the plaster-like stuff on the ceiling had started to flake off and make a huge mess. I was cleaning up the landing at the top of the steps when I started mouthing off at the energy that I felt around me. I felt unwelcome in my own home, and that pissed me off. I know, I shouldn't have said the things I did, but I was pissed, as it's my house. I won't write what I said here, as I still live in this home and don't want to put those words back into existence, and you'll see why. There were three rooms up the stairs, and all three doors were closed during this time. Once I started getting really belligerent, all three doors started to shake violently in the door frames. It was as if there was someone behind each of them just shaking and banging them against the frames. I immediately started having a panic attack and sank to the floor. I screamed out for whatever it was to stop and that I was sorry. And it did. I bolted down the stairs to find my phone and call my husband. As I was about halfway down, I felt a hard and violent shove on the centre of my back that almost caused me to tumble down the remainder of the steps. My husband has never felt threatened in our home, but I constantly feel it, even before I made all those comments. And this all happened before the car started showing up, and they were all several months apart. This has happened several times at this point, it started about 16 months ago when I was cleaning my house around 12am. My husband, boyfriend at the time, works nights, so I had adjusted to his schedule. I usually kept the blinds open during the day and would go around closing them at night while I tidied up before bed. Our room was my last stop on the first night this happened. The curtains and blinds were open as I was sweeping the floor when I felt the sensation of being watched. I looked around me when my eyes focused on this silver sedan parked outside my house, mostly in the grass on my front lawn. Now for context, my bedroom window is about 15 yards from the road in front of my house. It's a small front yard in a pretty densely populated neighbourhood. Anyway, I saw the car before I saw her or him, I'm not sure, but there was clearly someone sitting in the driver's seat of the car and another person standing about 5 yards from my window clearly staring at me. The only reason I could see this is because the moon was fairly bright that night. 
I shrieked and dropped to the floor and crawled to the light switch to turn it off so that I couldn't be seen. I called my husband to ask him what I should do and he told me to call the cops. I did and of course by the time they got there the car was gone. They asked if they could see my security footage and I agreed but the footage from this section of time was just gone. It skipped over the few minutes that they would have been outside. This has happened several times since then and I've completely given up on calling the police as I feel as I think they're crazy. I have no proof that this is happening but I would like to have some opinions as to what they may be doing. In the past 16 months it's probably happened 10 times. Sometimes the person is standing in the yard, and sometimes they aren't. Also, the car has been different every time. But the light is always on inside the cabin of the vehicle. But when I go to look, the people inside are never looking where I can see their faces. I'll run to grab my phone to call someone, anyone, but they'll already be gone. When I was a kid, in the 90s, I would often sleep at my grandmother's house, in the middle of a small village in the Giora region of France. The bedroom I would stay in was called the room in the back. As the name suggests, it was one of the last two rooms at the end of a main corridor shaped like an L. There wasn't anything special about that bedroom. It was pretty small and contained a bed, shelves with books, and some other very basic furniture. Yet, for some reason, that room creeped me out. I felt an unwelcoming presence, and I would always struggle to fall asleep, scared of whatever invisible forces seemed to be lurking in the dark. One night there, when I was around eight years old, I woke up scared and confused. I found myself lying down on the floor and in total darkness. I feel I need to make two things clear here. This is the only time in my entire life that I've ever awakened outside of whatever bed or couch I'd been sleeping in. The second thing to note is that despite the fact that the house was located in a small village, it wasn't particularly isolated and the streetlights outside would always let a bit of light filter through the closed blinds at night. So here I was, a child surrounded by total obscurity, struggling to understand why I wasn't in my bed. I tried my best to stay calm and touch around me, hoping to find the side of the bed nearby so I could climb back into it. I simply could not find it. I tried for several minutes, but it just didn't seem to be there, which was extremely strange, considering that the bedroom wasn't that big in the first place. I therefore decided to move forward in a single direction, to find a wall that I could then follow until I would find the bed. Things just got even stranger as I tried to find a wall. I would bump into furniture I would not recognize, and despite all my efforts, I simply couldn't find one. Everything around me was completely and utterly unfamiliar. I thought about calling for help. My grandmother was sleeping in the bedroom on the other side of the corridor, and my parents in the living room. However, I imagined them finding me screaming on the floor and decided not to, not wanting to face that kind of embarrassment. Finally, I fell asleep on the floor, giving up on finding the bed. I woke up the next morning in that damn bed and under the blankets. It was like the entire event had been nothing more than a weird dream, yet it absolutely did not feel like a dream. I'm a natural lucid dreamer and even back then I was already very familiar with how dreams feel and this just wasn't one, or at least I don't think it was. A few years ago, a long time after this strange occurrence, I went to England to visit my aunt who's from the other side of the family. She claims to be a witch and is into a lot of new age stuff. I've always been skeptical, but I have to admit that she's done and said a few strange things that got me to go from not believing her at all to being a bit more neutral about it. We were talking about our respective families and she went on about the only time when she had ever been in my grandmother's house when I was a baby. I thought it was a good opportunity to see if she had sensed anything unusual there and asked her, making sure to keep the question open enough to not influence her. First thing she said was, ah yes, the room in the back. She said it in English and had no idea we called it that way in French. There was something wrong with that room. I was spooked. Once I got back to France, 
I decided to confront my mother about it, since she'd spent her childhood in that house. As soon as I asked her what the hell was wrong with the room in the back, she froze and her face became white. She explained to me that when she was little, she went into that bedroom with a few friends and they tried to invoke spirits for fun. They immediately heard three very violent knocks and ran off screaming. She told me that ever since, the room feels weird. That's it. Nowadays, the room is pretty different, but still used as a guest bedroom. It still feels weird, but I'd say a lot less than when I was a kid. I know my brothers, who were 10 years younger, have also complained about feeling uncomfortable there for some reason, but they never had any unusual experience there. This has haunted me for about a decade now, and it's time I share it. About 10 or so years ago, I have the house to myself, still living with my parents at the time, and I have a friend staying over. The night was going smoothly and normal. We're playing co-op video games as teenage boys do. But eventually, we both end up on our phones scrolling through Tumblr. My friend stumbles upon a 40 to 50 minute audio tape file of a private investigator talking to a high school campus about his experience during a murder investigation he's conducted. I believe it took place in Texas, if I recall correctly. Long story short, towards the end of this audio file, it all leads up to the PI believing that the victim was exposed to a demon or evil entity. Who was the reason for the death of this person? He states at the very end testimony of this case, that this demon feeds off of your fear, and that the more you think about it, the stronger its energy and presence gets. As far as we could both tell, it was a real testimony and not a parody or creepy paster. So me and my friend heard the whole 40 or so minutes of testimony. We were just enthralled, almost hypnotized by it. And afterward, we tried to go back to playing our games. Well, not five minutes later, the power in my room, and my room only, goes out. No big deal. So I just go and flip the breaker and turn it back on. Three minutes later, boom, again. Flip the breaker again. One minute later, boom, again. This continues with shorter time frames until the power in my room just won't come back on. The first time it happens, we think it's mere coincidence. But by this point, fear is really happening and the thought of this entity is in our heads. At this point, about 12 to 1 a.m., my friend decides that this isn't worth it for him and he heads back to his place, leaving me by myself. So the night goes on a little bit and my friend leaves. I spend the rest of the night in my living room, lights on and crash on the couch. I wake up with the TV still on and it's between 3 to 4 a.m. I don't know what the fuck possessed me to go back to my room to sleep, but for some reason, I convince myself it's all in my head and head to my bed to sleep. I fall asleep incredibly fast and my dream begins with me in my bed and room just as it was laid out in real life in the pitch black. This was extremely vivid and an exact replica of my room. I was as lucid as I would have been awake. But in one of the top corners of my room where the wall meets the ceiling, I saw a pair of angry, dirty, yellow looking eyes that were on a pitch blacker than black figure hanging on my ceiling, just staring into my soul. I was fixated on these eyes and they were fixated on me. I was just in shock and couldn't move. But the second I tried to move at all, the shadow figure zoomed to another corner of my ceiling and then launched at me. I woke up in a sweat just before I got contacted. The dream felt so fucking real and vivid and I woke up literally screaming. There was a real sense of dread that took over my entire body at that moment. I felt mentally and physically sick. Power was still not working in my room, so I went out to the living room again and finished the night with all the lights on. Nothing more ever came from that night, but as far as I can tell and find, that audio tape never existed. I've spent days upon days trying to find it multiple times all over the internet, and nothing even close comes up on search results. By the way, the power to my room worked perfectly the following day after the sun rose and has worked perfectly ever since.
This is my very real story that happened in 2014. My family flew from the US to Wales for my brother's wedding. We stayed in a very old remodeled barn party house in Abergavenny. It was right below the canal and we had a free day before the wedding party was meeting at the local pub that night. I got back from a run at the canal, showered and had time to take a nap before dinner. As I'm laying in bed, I feel the presence of a woman and then feel the front side of my hand stroke my cheek. Then feel the entity jump on me and pin me to the bed. I'm struggling and finally get free. I hear a woman's cackle and laugh three times. This was witnessed. My door was half open and there was a sitting area outside and my mom was sitting there and said she saw me laying in bed struggling. She didn't hear the laugh. Nothing else happened during the trip. The next month, I started dating a woman who would eventually move in and become my wife. This is when things started getting weird. Anytime she would spend the night, if we fell asleep with an arm or leg touching each other, we would both have terrible nightmares. I don't ever have bad dreams or nightmares. One that I recall vividly was an extremely old and wrinkled woman in black and white, screaming at me in a foreign language I didn't understand. We would make a point to sleep as far apart as possible to avoid the dreams. Then one night, I had a dream. I'm in this astral plane and everything is blue around me. Standing in front of me is a young petite woman. She was short, like five feet tall, and looked very European, with a round face and dark blonde hair. She was dressed in very period correct plain clothing from a long time ago and wasn't wearing makeup. She walked up to me and said, my name is Abigail, and nothing else. I tried talking to her, but that's all she said. Now, I've never heard the name Abigail in my life. Google it and see it's Eastern European for Abigail. After that, Abigail got really spiteful and tried to wreck our relationship. A couple key things that happened. Pulled my wife's hair. She was walking up our steps and was talking to me and I saw as if someone grabbed her hair to yank her down the steps. She froze, and we just looked at each other. Bent her engagement ring. It was on the dresser, and one morning she showed me it was so smashed she couldn't get it on her ring finger. And to me, I loaded a conversation from Google Hangouts when I was talking to another woman before I met my wife. I didn't even have Hangouts installed on the phone. That convo happened on my previous phone. Thankfully, it was date stamped and I settled her down and showed her. Other small things like hiding stuff. Stuff was going missing constantly. One time, we bought a bunch of meat and it was in this huge bag. And we set it down in the basement to put other groceries away. And it was gone. We looked everywhere and didn't find it until a year later when there was a bag of rotting meat in the basement. As the next couple years went on, things started to die down. And when we married, they stopped. I guess she finally gave up. I never had any sage cleansing done or had a medium visit to the house because I didn't want to make things worse and present a challenge for the entity to fight. But I was researching mediums and was close. I'm a 16 year old girl situated in India with my parents and my sister. We live in a quiet street and we don't hear sounds except for occasions like someone's wedding and things like that. I live in a building where everyone moved out, leaving only my family and another guy's family. For a few months, we were experiencing paranormal stuff, but they were unnoticeable. But for a few days, it's been getting out of hand and it's noticeable. Even after I did everything that was on my mind, like using sage. I'll list a few of my experiences here, but before that, I'll explain how my house is. The main door and the living room are attached together, and it was a small washroom for guests. We don't use that washroom except for cleaning it once every week, and two rooms. The very first experience happened in the living room. Me, my sister and my mother were chilling, sitting on the couch, when my sister pointed at something. I didn't care at first, but when I saw something in front of the living room washroom, the door was open. It was a shadow of a whole person walking and then it disappeared. We instantly checked the washroom and no one was inside there. 
and there wasn't something that would cause a shadow of a moving person. Then we saw stuff like sculptures moving, doors automatically opening. Then this experience happened in the living room once again. The washroom door was open and I looked at it and I caught a glimpse of a white face, fully white, black spots on the place where the eyes are supposed to be, and then it vanished. This morning, I placed my pair of earphones on the middle of the stool and I sat down on the bed. After a few minutes, I heard a noise and naturally I looked up to see my earphone floating in midair for half a second and then it fell on the ground. This same incident happened to me when I was doing chores one day in the kitchen, but with a spatula. I had more experiences about this. My big question is, is my house haunted? This happened while I was doing my army experience in Switzerland. I'm not really allowed to talk about what we were doing, but I'll try to keep things clear. My company had installed a huge antenna, and it had to be guarded by two soldiers day and night. We were on top of a hill, far away from any city and near a huge forest. It was six o'clock, and I had just started my six hours with another soldier. Everything went fine. We smoked cigarettes and kept ourselves occupied until our watch ended at midnight. Then, we received a call from our superior, and he told us that one of the soldiers that was supposed to take the watch couldn't come and one of us had to stay for another watch of six hours. We tossed a coin to know who will stay from midnight to six in the morning with temperatures of minus 20 Celsius degrees. Of course I lost, and I had to wait for the other soldiers to come and join me for the night watch. And they didn't send the best because I knew he would sleep all night when I saw him climbing the hill with his sleeping bag. And that's what he did. He immediately took place in the tent and fell asleep it was the coldest and longest night of my life, but nothing special about it. The weirder part happened in the morning. We received another call from our superior, and he told us that we had an NBC exercise, which means that we have to wear our NBC suit, an anti-chemical suit. The one with the gas mask and everything that goes with it. I was really upset and exhausted because I wasn't able to sleep with that thing on, and sleep was my only reward after that 12-hour watch. Well, I got out of the tent, and this is where I saw something. There was a woman standing next to our antenna, and she wasn't moving. She was just standing there, five meters from the tent. I couldn't see her face because of the sun starting to rise behind her. Like a locked fighter in Tekken, really. I knew she was a woman because she had really long hair and she had curves. Remember that we were in the middle of nowhere, and this lady was standing there, not moving like she was frozen. I started to freak out and I called the other guy to show him what I was looking at. I don't know why, but he wasn't scared at all and he told her to leave because she wasn't allowed there. But she didn't make a move. She just stood there looking at us or at least in our direction. And this lasted for at least a minute or two. I was so confused how a woman could ignore two soldiers telling her to leave a forbidden area. I mean, we are in Switzerland. The army is not that impressive, I know, but people usually don't do this kind of thing. They would just move away, especially when it's six in the morning. And what was she doing in the middle of nowhere? Obviously not dressed for this cold weather. How long was she standing there and how she ended up there? I didn't hear any footsteps. So many questions went through my mind at that moment. The other soldier didn't think twice and started walking towards her. When he almost reached her, she started running very fast. She ran directly into the forest nearby. I saw her getting deep down in the forest and she disappeared from our sight. I'm really a rational thinker. I question everything and think that there is always an explanation. For me, the explanation is that she was simply a jogger because of the way she ran to the forest, but almost three minutes have passed between the first time I saw her and the moment she started running away. Three minutes of not moving at all, looking at me, dressed with something really tight with minus 20 degrees, and in the middle of nowhere. 